finishing our quadrilaterals. I'm finishing our quadrilaterals um, section uh, flip book by looking at squares. I burned my arm the other night and I just scratched it. Ladling food out of the pot and my hand hit the yeah. Um, the flip book has trapezoids on it. No, it has trapezoids on it. Um, we trapezoids are not. I've said it once. I'll say it again. They are not in the standards anymore. They used to be. I don't know why they decided not to cover trapezoids. Um, I left it in the flip book because. You should really know what a trapezoid looks like, but I'm not going to expect you to know the properties of it. Um, it's a nice to know, not a need to know. See the difference? Uh, squares are a need to know, and the good news is every one of you should know what a square looks like, um, which should make it very helpful. Scratch me right there. Which should make it very helpful when we're doing this worksheet. Um, you just may not know the actual properties of the square outside of the fact that all four sides are equal and all four corners are 90 degrees. Okay, let's go to the squares flip. Um, let me change my screen so that I, you can actually see. By the way, this is page 27. Part of your homework over the weekend, and don't you dare say, yeah, homework! Yeah, you're in high school. You have homework. Your homework over the weekend is to make sure your notebook is in order. Okay. If you do that every day as I'm teaching, then you're good. Um, because there will be a pop notebook check quiz next week, and it will be a legit... Right. And I promise, the second one will be a complete, like, pop your notebook out and let's check it. But um, it's sometime next week and it'll be a very short, sweet quiz and you need to be ready for it. Um, you can come to it as long as you stay on top of your stuff. I also need to give y'all the answers to parallelograms, rectangles, and rhombi worksheets. Um, I've taken the grade on parallelograms, but I did not give you the answers to it. It does you no good to be answering if you don't know if you're doing it right, right? Mm -hmm. So you need to, um, I've got to get that to you, and then I'm going to do the squares. It's 24. I still haven't put it in yet, but it's, yeah. All right. Properties of squares. Um, you will notice the first five blanks look very familiar. Why is that? So please copy the properties of parallelograms to the first five properties of squares. should know them because um, if you look right there it says squares have all the properties of parallelograms, rectangles, and rhombi. So it's everything we've covered so far. It's every single thing. You've got that opposite sides are parallel. You've got opposite sides are congruent. You've got opposite angles are congruent. 
the second is angled for supplementary. Which means they add up to 180. You've got diagonals bisect each other. You've got that all four angles are right, which makes them 90 degrees. You've got that all sides are congruent. You've got the diagonals are congruent. You've got the diagonals are perpendicular, which means they intersect at what um, angle? 90. And then you've got diagonals bisect opposite angles. So basically, if it's a square, any and every property that we've discussed, it has it. It should make it the easiest type of shape to do because there is so much that you can find when you have a square in front of you. Um, just like the other shape, if we have diagonals drawn, then you need to look for alternate interior angles. If the diagonals are drawn, then you have four triangles. Because the diagonals are perpendicular, you have four right triangles. You have four right triangles. It's kind of hard to show that, but these are all these are all 90 because one at just the fact that one of them is 90. Um, because the diagonals are congruent and they bisect each other, they are all equal. So not only do you have four right triangles, you have four right Isosceles triangles. Four right isosceles triangles. And that's going to be really helpful if you can remember that. Okay? So that's kind of like an extra property, not property, but that's a result of these properties that would be really helpful if you remember. So the isosceles triangles only appear with. Uh, rectangles and squares. Okay, and that's because it's upright. It wasn't straight like this. Uh, it's upright, so the diagonals are equal. Okay, all right, let's practice. Get down here to the bottom. Let's put it all together. Tells me it's a square. Clearly not drawn to shape. Find each missing measure, and we're dealing with just sides at first. Then we're dealing with angles, right? C to F is 8, what would C to E be? What would C to E would be 16. Uh, what would B, C be? C, C is an outside, which means you have to do Pythagorean uh, theorem. So that means this is also 8. What? Pythagorean theorem. 8 squared plus 8 squared equals BC squared. 64 plus 64 is 128, and the square root of 128 will be, there you go, 11.3 on, on all four sides. CFD. C to F to D. Very good. 90. Alright. DBE. D D E. Right here. How do you know? It just says half of 90 is 45. 45 plus 45 is 5. And that's the same thing. There you go. Multiple ways to see this. What is the corner of the square? It's 90. Do you all agree? Yeah. 
okay? And the diagonals bisect the opposite angles. Well, 90 cut in half is 245. Instead of 8. It says if this is a square, find QS. QS, it would help if you have a highlighter so you can highlight what your, your goal is. So that's the goal. It's the length of the diagonal. I know this is 21. I know the shape is what? Square. So what's this? And what's this? So what shape is that? Which means you're using Pythagorean theorem. Oh. No, Pythagorean theorem is going to come up in every math class you take from here on out except statistics. Pythagoras. No, yeah. So please, if y'all could just learn to be able to do it, it would make your life a lot easier. So it's Pythagorean theorem. The restriction on the Pythagorean theorem is the hypotenuse has to go where C is, and it's always opposite of the right angle. So the hypotenuse in this case is what they wanted me to find anyway. So 21 squared plus 21 squared equals QS squared. You will notice that there is no backside to it. So if you could all please take a second and give me a round of applause for having no backside. Yeah. Oh.
right, we know it's a square. Uh, it says to find BC. That's it. Okay. It says to find AC. How do you get that? Wait, 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 wait. Are we not supposed to find that? So you should have noticed the right triangle here. It's a square. So it's going to be 11 squared plus 11 squared is equal to 18 squared, right? So 242. Is the square root 242? What is it? Okay. Um, PD would then be good. No work to do there. Okay, PC would be half. Right, you're going to you're going to divide this by two. Okay, and then uh, the angles should have been either ninety or forty-five. Right? Um, let's see. D A B is ninety. A, E, B is 90, C, D, D is half of 90, so that's 45, and then B, A, C is also half of 90. Alright, so what problems left? Look at number two. Okay, my fingers are, you are mine. You just lost my paper. Alright, look at number seven. It tells us the square, y'all know me. And I'm going to remind myself what I know. PR is 17. PR is right here at 17. Well, if PR is 17, what are all the other diagonals? Who is the pieces are all 17, right? All right, we're finding PR from here to here. Thank you. 